Welcome to Electron Line. Most math. Let me try it again. Welcome to Electron Line. This is a very typical problem that you would encounter in a book that tries to. Let me try this again. Welcome to Electron Line. A very typical problem in this category is emptying a trough. Assuming that the trough is filled with water, we're going to take, we're going to figure out how much work it takes to remove all the water from the trough. Notice that the cross-sectional area is triangular in shape. The sides are one meter at the top, one meter at the sides, and the length is four meters and it's filled with water. So again, what we're going to need to do is calculate how much work it will take to remove a small amount of slice of that water. That water will have a, a volume dV and the dV is going to be equal to the surface area, which is going to be the length times the width. Now the width is going to be a variable, so we'll call that x. The width will be x from there to there, and the length will be 4. So the volume will be 4x times the height, which is a dy. Now since our differential is dy, we'll have to express x in terms of y. Notice that y will be 0 at the top, and will be some value down here at the bottom. We first have to figure out what the height will be. So the height in this case, from there to there, let's figure that out. So the cross-sectional area is an isosceles triangle. Matter of fact, it is... A matter of fact, it's an equilateral triangle with sides 1, 1, and 1. Now if we draw a line straight across like this, we can see that this here will be one half, and then the height can be calculated by saying that h will be equal to the square root of one squared minus a half squared, which is equal to the square root of three over four, which is equal to the square root of three over two, which is about 0 0.866. So the height of that trough is 0.866. So when we integrate, it'll be from y equals zero at the top to y equals 0.866 at the bottom. So let's go ahead and plug that in here, 0.866 like that. All right. Now, how do we relate x to y? Well, when y is 0, x is 1. When y is 0.866, x is 0. So that means that x is going to be equal to 0 0.866. Oop, no, I'll take that back. 1 minus, it'll be y divided by 0 0.866. Let's see if that works. When y is equal to 0, x equals 1. When y equals, equals to 0.866, at the bottom here, then this divided by that will be 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, and that works. So there's our relationship between x and y, which can go in here. So our small amount of dv is equal to 4 times 1 minus y over 0 0.866 times dy. Of course, we need to know more than that. We actually need to know the mass of this slice. And so we can say that dm, the small amount of mass, is going to be equal to the density times the volume. Okay, that means that dm is equal to the density times dv, and dv will be 4 times 1 minus y over 0 0.866 times dy. And now we're ready to go ahead and integrate this because we can say that the work done to move all the water out of the trough is going to be equal to the sum of all the small dw's and that will be equal to the sum of, now dw can be defined as being equal to the small amount of mass that we're moving out of the trough times g times the height y. So our dm is defined right here. So it'll be 4 times the density times 1 minus y over 0 0.866 times dy times g times y. Now the limits are going to be from y equals 0 at the top to y equals 0 0.866 at the bottom. And one more thing is, let's go ahead and take all the constants out for the density and g can all be taken out and the y can be multiplied by this. So this can be equal to the integral from 0 to 0 0.866 and I didn't leave enough room for my constants. I keep saying I'm going to take out the constants 
and then I don't leave enough room. All right, so let's take the constants out. It's 4 times the density times g times the integral from 0 to 0 0.866. And then we're going to multiply this y times the 1 and this y times this y. So this will be the quantity y minus y squared over 0 0.866 and times dy. Now we're ready to integrate this. So this becomes equal to 4 times the density times g times, this will be y squared over 2 minus y cubed over 3 times 0 0.866, evaluated from 0 to 0 0.866. Okay, now it's not quite as bad as you think, because take a look. So the work done is equal to 4 times the density times g times. We plug in the upper limit. Well, first of all, when we plug in the lower limit, we get 0, so we don't have to worry about the lower limit. When we plug in the lower limit, 0.866 squared, well, notice that if we square this, we get 3 over 4, which is 0.75. So we get 0.75 divided by 2. So 0 0.75 divided by 2 minus... Here, when we plug in 0.866 cubed, but we still have a 0.866 at the bottom, that's the same as 0.866 squared, which again is point, uh, 0.75 divided by 3. So that would be minus 0 0.75 divided by 3. So notice I can pull out the 0.75. 4 times 0.75 is 3. So this is equal to... 3 times the density times g times what we have left is 1 half minus a third. And half minus a third is 1 sixth because this is 3 sixths minus 2 sixths which is 1 sixth. So this would be 3 divided by 6 times the density times g and 1 sixth of 3 sixths is of course 1 half. So it's 1 half times the density times g. And let's now go ahead and calculate what that's equal to. So we have 1,000 times 9.8 divided by 2, we get 4,900, and the units are joules. And so that's how much work it will take to take all of the water out of a full trough when it's filled to the brim, 1 meter at the top, 0.866 meters high, and 4 meters long. And that's how it's done.